Chris Grandy, chrisgrandy.com. Thanks for joining us today. I've got a uh, special guest with me, Josh Obader from Senior Help, Seniors Helping Seniors in, uh, uh, in, uh, based in Newton. Thanks for uh, joining us today, Josh. Appreciate having you. Thanks for having me, Chris. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Listen, hey, well, today we're going to uh, we're going to interview Josh and find out what's going on with him at Seniors Helping Seniors. And uh, so first I want to start off with was, um, you know, I found when we met, I found what you did very fascinating. And I and I thought, wow, that's that'd be someone I would really want to, you know, would, would want to share with people I know and what he's doing uh, this great service. And why don't you start off and tell me what is um, Seniors Helping Seniors? Sure. Um, so Seniors Helping Seniors is um, technically considered a non-medical home care agency. Um, but even, even more niche than that, we really are a companionship service for seniors by seniors. So our model is that we employ older adults or retired seniors who are still active and capable who are looking for meaningful and purposeful work. And we partner them or pair them with someone they'd be compatible with, an older senior, who may need some assistance um, in a variety of different facets, depending upon um, their condition, who they're living with, and, and their circumstances. So it's a personalized service from uh, another senior who can they can best relate to. Great. Well, I mean, that's interesting. Now, uh, before we get on with Seniors Helping Seniors and more about what you're doing, tell me first, how did you get into this because you know when I when I actually met Josh everybody on LinkedIn and uh, you know his profile he had worked at Forrester and some other very high quality um, you know fortune 500 1000 companies and and so what made you leave that what looked like a very promising career track uh, in the corporate world for you know starting something totally you know off the ground in the uh, you know in a completely different field working with seniors what made you, what, what what inspired you to get into this yeah, well, it's, it's a great question, you know, and a lot of folks ask that. And um, so, you know, I think everyone has, um, you know, their professional experience and people have their personal experience. And um, on a personal note, uh, my professional career, while it was exciting and I was moving up the ranks and the corporate ladder, I was really disconnected from the type of work that I was doing. Um, I wasn't passionate about the fields or the, the the subject matters that I was representing, um, and I always felt that you know when you're working in a field that you're truly passionate about, you'll a be more successful. B, um, you know your clients or those that you're working with will be better off. And um, working with seniors has been something that has been kind of part of my life um, from a very young age. Um, I started to um, really connect with seniors back with a middle school volunteer project where I was um, assigned to work 10 hours um, at a local nursing home. That extended to um, weekly two-hour visits with a what ended up being a 101-year-old woman uh, for five years uh, until I graduated high school. Uh, and it was that deep-seated connection that I had with her that made me realize that seniors not only were um, full of wonderful information and insight, but they were that an undervalued um, kind of part of our population and our, and our community. Um, that sparked my involvement in a future volunteering engagements um, in assisted livings and senior centers and nursing homes where I was running intergenerational programs. And that really was where my passion was. And kind of alongside that, I saw the care um, that a lot of seniors were getting and, and the disconnect between those that were caring for them and um, the, the seniors. And um, everything felt very task oriented for me. And I felt that there had to be a better way to connect caregiving um, and the socialization aspect. And I think um, when I heard about seniors helping seniors and, and learned more uh, about the model um, that we utilize, uh, it made sense to me on a variety of different uh, levels, and um, it allowed me to continue working with seniors in a professional capacity and com combined um, my business background as well. Oh, fantastic. And now, last time we had talked, you'd mentioned that you were really starting to get busy with, uh, you know, you know that your area was, was, you know, 
what why do your clients why do you feel like your clients prefer and what is the what is the advantage to having an older say a, a senior a healthy senior companion helping someone as opposed to what you typically see you know if you go to the mall or you, or you happen to be in your local square and you see a you know maybe a, a 28 year old um, aide or nurse helping a senior go get their prescriptions you know most of the time companions are a lot younger um, sometimes they're relatives but a lot of times they're younger people if it's on a professional basis what why, why do your clients prefer, and from what you've talked to people, why do you feel people prefer having, say, another senior, maybe a healthy senior, to, to be a companion? Yeah, and, you know, um, first off, you know, uh, as we are relatively new, we really have seen um, a fair amount of success, and, you know, clients are responding well, and families are responding well. And I think it's um, a large part due to the fact that a senior companion or a senior caregiver can really connect with, um, on a different level than other types of caregivers. They've walked the walk, they have shared life experiences, they really know the ups and downs that life brings, they can empathize, they know what it's like to have arthritic hands or what it's like to be going through dementia or Alzheimer's with a loved one. They've been there, they, they have that sense of understanding that life experience brings versus um, somebody who is a little bit more disconnected from the senior population. Um, I think what people also like is that we are not a task-oriented agency only. We don't just make the bed, help prepare breakfast, and take them to a doctor's appointment. We're able to do that, but connect on a interpersonal level as well. And um, I truly think um, when you talk about senior care at large, um, the interpersonal piece is what's missing, and um, it's so crucially important for uh, the well-being of, of a senior. So I think that in and of itself, that emotional connection is what has um, resonated with families. Oh, that's great. And, and you had mentioned, too, that um, something we hadn't, uh, I hadn't meant to bring up, but it's something that it made me think of. That last time we talked, you mentioned you were seeing, I think a lot of your clients were people with, uh, with dementia, or some kind of you know some kind of dementia related um, um, symptoms, and uh, why so much you know why do you feel like you're getting a lot of them? Are these folks that because they're still physically capable that the family wants to keep them home as opposed to someone who needs more physical help and they really have to be they, they really are you know people who need physical help are really better off in a some kind of facility where if it's just you know slight cognitive to moderate cognitive um, uh, you know issues that uh, you could really you really benefit from having that human touch element. Yeah, you know, I think it's a lot of things. Um, I think you know when, when you look at our um, aging population, dementia, Alzheimer's um, is a hugely prevalent disease that impacts uh, not only older adults but um, early onset adults as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, unfortunately a devastating disease that um, slowly progresses, but the families and the, and the person with dementia and Alzheimer's is still capable of a lot. And um, what they really need is engagement. They need stimulation. They need to still be an active member of society and, and be, be participatory. So uh, when someone gets to the point where it's maybe less safe for them to be living independently, or uh, their family member who lives with them needs to leave the home and, and they're uncomfortable leaving uh, their loved one by themselves, we go in and we can provide not only the companionship, but the opportunity for uh, a fresh, fresh face, someone who has a genuine interest in that person, connecting with them, and really um, instilling you know, a lot of not only compassion, but a lot of life back into them. And um, what I find is that we are not just going to do a friendly visit, but we're really participating in, in their favorite activities, whether it be going to a baseball game or to the museum or to a concert or a walk around the ponds. Um, that's how we're helping. And um, we're taking that, that, that burden off of family members that feel obligated to be there all the time. And we're supplementing their visits, but in turn, we're really um, enhancing not only uh, our clients' quality of life, but our family members' quality of life too, knowing that um, they can feel comfortable um, with their companion um, assisting. 
And you mentioned, uh, you know, this 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 idea of keeping um, um, people participatory while they're in that stage, and it brings makes me think of so. Maybe that's not happening enough, and it should be. So, what do you feel is the biggest area, and that certainly could be one of them, is the biggest area where you feel that we're failing seniors as a society? You know, I think um, when you think about seniors and you know the senior population in general, I think a lot of people uh, steer clear uh, of of seniors. Um, they are uncomfortable around them or they feel disconnected, but I think we're really not leveraging the knowledge and insight that they bring to the table. They have sometimes 80 or 90 years of life experience, uh, challenges and obstacles that they have faced that can be great teachings for us um, to help us maybe really prevent us from making those similar mistakes. But not only that, though, um, they are just wonderful contributions to our community, and they add so much. Uh, they they add a, they really shed a whole new light on on different ideas, uh, and I think we're really disconnected from them because our seniors are are really sec, you know segregated in many ways. We have senior centers that are only for seniors. We have assisted living, independent housing communities that are really designed for seniors. I think if we started thinking along the lines of incorporating community um, into all senior living communities and senior centers, then I think we'd be better off. So what about an after school program um, in the same location as a senior center? An intergenerational type of community center that would bring all generations together that would uh, benefit all and assisted living communities, independent housing communities. Why not intersperse younger adults, college students in those communities as well so that intergenerational learning can happen on an ongoing basis? And I think um, once we get over some of those, uh, you know, segregation uh, of senior type of activities and, and locations where seniors are living, I think we will all benefit and, and realize the value that the senior population brings to everyone. That's great stuff. Thanks. And, you know, I have two more questions for you. One is, um, when you're not, I know you're involved with the, with the Alzheimer's organization, you're, you're working with seniors, you you're start, you're started a business, very involved around town. When you're not doing all this business stuff, what is Josh doing? Like, where, 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 what do you have, what do you do when you're having fun? <laughs> well, right now, um, if you can, if you've ever started your own business, you know, it's um, a lot of hard work and a lot of grit. But, um I live in Jamaica Plain, and I live right across from the pond. So I um, am I'm constantly trying to get outside and, and be active. Uh, I'm training for a half marathon right now. Uh, I really enjoy traveling. Uh, I've traveled to many countries, and that's definitely a large pastime of mine. Uh, spending time with family and friends, and um, a big uh, foodie. So I'm trying to to get around to some of the. Uh, the, the newest and latest Boston restaurants. So uh, you may see me around town in some of those places. Okay, well, listen, the last question I'll ask you is, as we've talked about, not only, you know, you are looking, you know, people can get involved with seniors helping seniors on both sides. They can, you can be um, a client where you're being helped, or you can be someone who's uh, working with you and through you to help others. Uh, if someone both you know, feels like they maybe want to work part-time helping um, elderly people, you know, they, they want to do that. Or on the other side, if they're a person or, or a loved one of someone who, you know, could benefit from some more, uh, uh, you know, age contemporary assistance or a companionship, how does someone get a hold of you? What's the best way, the best two or three, you know, best few ways to get a hold of you? Sure. Yeah. So, um, well, first they can check out our website, which is, um, seniorshelpingseniors.com backslash greater Boston. But uh, I'd love to speak with them as well. Uh, and the best number to reach us is 617-877-3163. Um, or, of course, email works as well. And uh, they can contact me directly at josh at shsboston.com. Great. So in that case, too, if someone wants to reach you, they're not getting, you know, I know you have some assistance working with you, but they're not getting that. They're getting, they go, email's going right to you. People can, you know, you're a local business. People can reach you personally if they want to talk. It's This is not, uh, you know, this massive web of people. They, they call that number. They're, they're either, they're going to get you or one person away from you. If they email you, they're going to get you, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we are very local. We support the greater Boston area. And, um, you know, we have a personal connection with all of our 
employees and our clients alike. Well, that's great. Well, listen, Josh, thanks for uh, joining uh, me today. I think uh, what you had to say is going to be very valuable to you know, all, of, uh, you know, all of my subscribers, and I think that it's a great resource. So both if you're out there and you're looking for, um, uh, you know, if you're out there and you're looking for uh, something to, uh, you know, to do part-time for work or, or you know somebody who needs some companionship and you think, you know, maybe your mom or your, or your grandmother is, is looking for some companionship and, and, or, your, or your dad, and they'd be better off with someone closer to their age, you know, give Josh a call, you know, and, uh, uh, or, or email him. And, uh, and, you know, you can find out then. So, hey, Josh, thanks again. Have a great day. I appreciate you joining me. And uh, let's, we'll, we'll catch up soon, okay? All right. Thanks so much, Chris. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Have a great one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.